If you've ever built an Electron application or if you're building one right now, one of the biggest hurdles to get through, even you know, with communication with uh, documentation available, is figuring out patterns around how to set up your back end and your front end, your main and the renderer thread, what goes where and how the two can communicate together. And I wanted to talk about how I set up my applications for um, and how I like to have them connected and how I, I, how I uh, facilitate communication between the two. Uh, so an, a typical Electron application will have two threads. That'll be the main thread, which is kind of like the back end. Um, it should be reserved to uh, access the file system, do all these different things. You can still do it from the renderer thread, but um, it's often uh, recommended to use the main thread for kind of these background tasks. And the main thread also fires off the renderer thread. Uh, and this is pretty important because you can actually have multiple renderer threads, multiple windows, all um, all controlled by one main thread. But most of the time you're gonna see one, a one-to-one -one ratio. Um, I like to think about the different renderer threads as kind of like tabs. I think that's actually where, where that whole idea comes from. I'm not 100% sure, but unless you're building something very complex, you're most likely gonna stick to one to one ratio, uh, or rather one main thread, one renderer thread. So one of the things that differentiates the two is that the renderer thread basically runs in a browser-like context with um, all the, some of the safeties removed. Uh, you should be accessing the, the web with it. So, um, you know, if you're loading up a, or rather you, sh you should be loading up files locally. And when you load up files locally, Electron allows you to do all kinds of nifty things, including actually accessing uh, some of the node, node standard li library things. And I think that's being actually taken away and you have to um, explicitly enable it. But um, when Electron first started and before version four, I think, um, the renderer thread was capable of doing almost as much as of the same stuff as the as the main thread, but the renderer thread has access to DOM. And when you load up your application, the you know whatever you see in your window and access with your dev tools, that's going to be renderer thread. While the main thread is you know you're going to see the console output in your console wherever you're running it. Um, so all of that aside, there are different ways of having the two threads communicate. Um, there's like electron.remote, I think is one of them that I've seen, but my favorite one is IPC or Interprocess Communication. I think that's what it stands for. Let me go ahead and show you my project real quick. So I set up my project in a way, in the same way that I would, let's say, a node application. I have a source, which is kind of like the server. I have an app, which is kind of like the, the front end and the source has the main thread, app has the renderer thread. Um, in the source, you know, um, I have a few different actions that I want to be able to do for the front end. So if somebody uh, clicks on a button on the front end, I want to somehow, uh, on the render thread, I want to somehow notify the main thread of you know, whatever action needs to happen, perform that action, and then notify the render thread back that the action was completed. It's kind of like this, again, client server pattern that you might be used to from a node application or um, well, whatever other web development application. Or sorry, web, you know, any application that has to do with web development, you have the server and you have the front end. So, you know, um, anyway, so, you know, I might have these actions that select all files or select certain files here and I'm exporting all of those. And then on the front end, I have a, a simple React application that, uh, let's see, we want to, we have a gallery. You know, we want to somehow be able to. Uh, this is for a single image, so I want to somehow be able to get data for a certain image with a certain ID. Um, if I was in Node land, I would just do a fetch request, and on the back end, I would have Express or something, you know, looking for that one specific route. Um, so let me show you what IPC looks like. Um, I've built a uh, a wrap around IPC, and I'll show you what that looks like in a second. But on the main thread, and you and anywhere you see IPC main, it means that it's a main thread, and I should probably uh, display the, the bootstrap for that. Um, you just need to require IPC main from Electron if you're running an Electron application. And you'll have immediately access to an event listener, 
So you you can actually listen on a specific events. One of those events is an asynchronous message. Um, and that's a message that you can send from the renderer thread to the main thread. And I'll show you what that looks like as well. Um, it has two arguments, event and argument. Event, I believe, is the actual, uh, let's see, build request. Okay, so the event object allows you to send messages back. There it is, event.sender.send. You can send a reply. Um, and then the arg is actually just the data that you're sending from the main thread or the renderer thread to the main thread. So let's say you want to send over an ID um, of a photo that you want information for. The argument would just, would just be that ID, like one or an object, however you want to structure it. Um, so this is how I have it set up. And I have the event.sender here and I have a a wrapper and I'm gonna go through this in a minute um, and then on the front end and again I have a wrapper for this uh, you get an IPC render and let me show you what that looks like so where do we bootstrap this I believe that's being bootstrapped here so yeah you just import IPC renderer from Electron and you're good to go and um, the IPC render has similar um, it has a similar setup to the IPC main. Um, the IPC renderer, again, you can listen on asynchronous events. And in this case, we're listening on asynchronous replies. So here, where we send an asynchronous reply, an event with this value, it would be, this would be the argument. Um, here, we listen in on that reply. And we're able to see it like here, the argument would just be, pong. If, it, if it's equal to Pong, we'll just console log that out. And here we're sending Pong, so that's gonna make it happen. Um, and on the back end, we have a few other things that we can do, or sorry, on the front end, we have a few other things we can do. If we wanna send a message, we just send a message, IBC renderer, that's sent asynchronous message. So we listen on a reply and we send over messages on the front end, and on the back end, we listen on messages and we send replies, so it's kind of you know, it, it all works together. Now, the wrapper that I've built uh, takes advantage of a few key things in JavaScript, and one of them being async await and promises. Um, and I feel like promises make this, promises and async await and all these different things make this entire experience much easier. So let's look at the communicator. This is for the back end. This is the one that we pass in an IPC main to. And you'll see that uh, as soon as we create or you know bootstrap this communicator, um, you know we'll log out listening on messages and we'll start listening on messages. Um, one thing that I want to mention here is that it listens on this ping pong, and so I have the front end sent a ping and the back end sent a pong, so I know that the I, the IPC is like it's working correctly. Um, and so as soon as you create it, it creates a message handler, or sorry, it creates this uh, listener. And it calls this message handler as soon as the first message comes through. And the message handler, I'm gonna zoom in actually, is over here. And the message handler, what it'll do is it'll act as a very basic um, router. So <laughs> it'll actually look at, you can register routes um, and it'll validate whatever messages it gets and it'll figure out you know what handler um, it needs to use, and then I'll create a spe specific uh, request and response object. Uh, this is should be very familiar to you if you used Express. Um, it'll pass those into the handler and do dub then. Um, and so when we do that, let's see, we can do this com dot register to register one of the routes, and I created the schema that kind of mirrors the the HTTP schema that you pass in the method get put post delete whatever, and you pass in the quote unquote route, and it'll match on that. And then we have an async await fu function, and again this should look very familiar. You get a request and response. The request object has data that has the data that the front end sends over, and then we have a res dot send to send that data back. And so what's cool is that the front end works very similarly, but when it sends a message and we're, we would have to dig through these different functions, um, it actually creates a UUID. It, may, it creates a unique identifier. So the front end send, has a unique identifier that it sends to the back end. The back end responds back with that unique identifier um, included in the request object. And the front end will find 
uh, whoever asked or whoever requested that data from the back end, it'll find that requester and it'll resolve that promise. So all wrapped up, this is what it'll look like. You'll have a transponder, that's the that's the object or that's the wrapper. You just do dot send and you send over that it's a get and that's a photo that you're looking for with this ID. And you do dot then and you get the response back. So no callbacks, no crazy event listening, no crazy matching of stuff. It feels like HTTP and HTTP did one thing right and that's this request response response you know idea um, that works really easily in in this context. I really like being able to have you know it's promises and it happens once and we have these unique identifiers and I can register events or actions um, that the front end can do f from the back end right the same way I would register a route in Express so the server client. Um, pattern is something I'm also a fan of, like I said. Uh, so this is this is how I built the communication. Um, if this can possibly be simplified, if you're used to Redux or something like that, imagine that dispatching an ad, you you know you could build this around that dispatcher uh, ideology or the dispatcher pattern. So you could dispatch an action to the back end, and the back end would then respond with whatever, um, or the back end would then you know mutate the state on your page and send back just a humongous object telling you hey you know this is what the new object should be so you could you could build that kind of pattern as well like i said i'm, I'm a fan of the http it's really straightforward you ask for data you get it back you ask for data in a specific you know format and you get it back and um you know it, it mirrors that server client that we're all kind of used to. So it feels very familiar. It doesn't feel like I'm using this new technology. It feels like the, the main thread is my node application. And the render thread is my um, is my front end or whatever. Um, anyway, so that, that's it. This is how I set up my communication between my front end and the back end. Um, the basics of it, you know, just to, just to um, go over that again, the basics of it are, you have a front end. The trans. Uh, you have a, f a front end that listens on replies, and um, I have a wrapper that allows that wraps the uh, IPC render send this action here um, in a promise. And you know, one thing that's important is to is to have some kind of protocol, some kind of a standard around how what how you pass data from the front end to the back end. And because of I, I have the standard of like, hey, there's gonna be UUID in each object, and it's gonna look like this. I'm able to constantly send messages back and forth, take take advantage of this UUID system to route, you know, responses back to the requester, and using on the back end using that that route schema, that match handler idea, um, to route my requests to the function that I want to fire. Um, I highly recommend this pattern. Uh, I've seen the electron.remote in a few places where you're able to uh, run remote functions um, from the front end. I, I don't know why, but it, I'm not as big of a fan of it. I like this separation. I like the separation that makes it feel more like a web application, despite the fact that I'm trying to make a desktop application. I don't know, but those are my thoughts. If you're using something else, a different pattern, or if you have some you know, uh, information to share about this, make sure to comment because I want to hear about it. I have gone on Electron forums. I've gone on the Electron Slack to discuss this with people several times over the past few years. And their idea was to, or like their solution was either this, like a very similar solution. And there are, there are a few libraries out there. I recommend hand rolling your own. Um, this is the only time that I'll recommend that, mostly because the libraries that I've looked at have always been like outdated or were like a year or two old and didn't work right, um, or you know, just they were a little bit sketchy. And, and and building a wrapper is really again short. You know, the the back end is you know 120 lines. The the front end is 80 lines, with console logs and interfaces and TypeScripty stuff. Anyway, so you know, I've gotten on Electron, and they recommend this approach. Or the only other approach they recommend is by using it's called protocols or something like that. It's basically having the ability to 
um, sent HTTP like requests to Electron and Electron listening on, um, you know, instead of HTTP, it would be like, I don't know, my Electron app, you know, colon slash slash or something something like that creating this new protocol so that you're able to do the the http request response um using fetch and other similar libraries being able to like plug that into rxjs and everywhere else uh and i think that's pretty cool uh i have my doubts about it just like this system uh, but if you have any success with it again comment below i'll uh, happily read your comment and respond and possibly even make a video if it's something you know, that, that I get into. Um, anyways, thanks for watching.